Hey, good morning everybody, Sarasota Tim. The sky is dark. Coming to you from 7-Eleven. Why am I not at Wawa? Well, those lazy bones don't get up until seven o'clock, I think. Uh, maybe six, I'm not sure. It's Sunday, so I think I went there and they said um, on the sign it was open at six or seven, and I went ahead and went to the gym. So I did Google, thanks to somebody in the community, showing me uh, all the places that are open 24 hours a day, and 7-Eleven is one of them. And this particular 7-Eleven is brand new and is one that I've been to in the past uh, several times. They ha also have excellent coffee. Uh, they have a big uh, coffee section in there. And I'm actually a member, I had the app, and if you put your phone number in, I think you get a deal. So let's go in there and get some coffee. So here we go. Let me zoom out for you guys. Hopefully they still remember my phone number. I can definitely uh, get a kind of a deal. What they have in here is some uh, some goodies too in the morning. You get a little shish kebab, little chicken pieces, biscuits. Look at all this stuff. They do a pretty good job in here. And there's some hot stuff here for the morning guys. And of course, for the sweet tooth. And I will absolutely be passing, but you don't get any fresher and more delicious than a glazed donut. These look a little dry, I gotta be honest with you. Oh, my favorite. That is absolutely my favorite. It's the crunchy one. It's not the big one with, this has got the apple in the middle. It's got apple in it, but that, oh, crunchy, sugar, sweet goodness you have all these look pizzas you get yourself a pizza pie pool boys sandwiches fruit i used to love to eat these loved them but look here's our coffee section and today we're going to go with the largest we can find thanks to my community buying me a coffee i will get the extra large the cup's got a dent on it. Might fall over. 7 Eleven uh, blend decaf. No, 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 no. Colombian black tea. And then they, they look, they have this um, hot latte, cappuccino, mocha, blah, 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 ice mocha. And you get the grounds that are freshly made and freshly ground hot or iced. Ooh, an iced coffee sounds good sometimes too, but got the grounds back there. We're, we're gonna go with Colombian. Leave room for cream. I don't need that much room. There we go. And then of course, uh, all your goodies. Now, Wawa has a bigger selection. I know I'm gonna hear about it. I'm looking for hazelnut. Does that say hazelnut? Which one says hazelnut? Caramel, no. No, I don't like the color of that one. <laughs> you know, some things just never get old. Yep. That's got pure sugar. Pure sugar. I'm gonna love this coffee. Now, let's taste it. Oh, thank heaven, the 7-Eleven. Mmm. Absolutely good. Mm -hmm. I love it when the one size cup lid fits all. Need two hands to do this because if you don't get it on right, never happen to you like this. If you don't get it on tight. Folks, we have a rainy day here in uh, South Florida. 
and uh, Teddy has asked me to go ahead and stay another day or two if I want. Um, we've got some other friends of his that are hit. The other guy, Tom's friends are down. And anyway, the Daytona 500 is going on today and it's probably gonna get rained out or delayed, meaning um, it probably won't get through until tomorrow. And so all of that traffic that I might have to go through up there, I might wanna stay put. Not to mention, what else is there to do in the rain, right? I think Luke is gonna make some uh, short ribs tonight for dinner. Why did I put the little hole down in the seam? Well, let's go pay and not get anything to eat. Maybe Teddy wants to go to breakfast this morning. What are these? Hispanic pastries. Two of them for $2. Oh, so after putting on my, my phone number in, it was still $2.77. Same price as Wawa. So uh, he said, yeah, you just don't have enough points for a freebie yet. But we got the points in. Look at this sky. I'm an early bird. And it is now, let's see what time it is. It's 10 to seven. When's it gonna get daylight? Man, it's in the afternoon already. There's the crusher. I got a free car wash. Um, it was so covered with pollen and nasty. And I come out this morning, uh, of course the generator's wet. The e-bike got wet. I did cover uh, the controller. The um, I'm testing everything to see if it'll stay um, running wet. <laughs> I could close the lid, but uh, I want it to kind of dry out. I'll probably close it when I get home because it's going to rain all day. And um, my shoes were wet. I came out this morning. They were outside the door. You know, there's no room to put anything inside, so... You have to leave everything out. Oh, you guys want to report, right? On how did I sleep with my new bedding? Like a baby. What time did I get up? Three o'clock in the morning, like always. It has nothing to do with my bedding. <clears throat> and I can swear uh, that it's much later. Let me, let me get in here. Hang on. Ugh. This is as hard getting in as that camper. It's so high up. Let's talk a little bit before I go and drink my coffee. Fill you in what's going on. <coughs> so last night I went to Walmart and I bought some of those prime rib burgers. Let me make sure this doesn't go out on us. It probably will in a second. And um, I cooked them on that new uh, grill. I should have videoed it. Uh, my little gas propane grill that I bought. And uh, Luke myself, Tom and Teddy uh, were sitting there. Tom's friends that are visiting. Uh, I didn't video them, but they're all subscribers of the channel now. And all four very cool guys. Tom is a sailor. He has a sailboat that he's extremely passionate about that he's had 47 years. <laughs> it's crazy. Looks brand new. And uh, the name of it is Night Moves. And he, I mean, he loves his sailboat. Well, his friends that he grew up with, as well as Teddy, he's known Teddy 77 years, um, they all sail as well. And so they're down here. And they came by and got the tour of Teddy's property. We're very impressed at the paradise that it is. And I went around with them during the tour. And it was kind of a refresher course for me, you know, bringing back about how amazing that place is and how he's built it. And it's unique and different from the way most other properties are uh, in the state. I mean, especially the properties on the water. 
he has a very unique situation there where, you know, it's just covered in palm trees and it's very tropical and with the tiki hut and everything, it's just really cool. So we got a great, great crew there and I'm in no hurry, even though I have to be back in three weeks for my follow-up appointment on my eye, it's just to check it and to check the pressure. So if I have to, in fact, he said he wanted to see me in two weeks, but then when he found out that he's on some kind of a holiday that week, he told the uh, appointment setter to make it three weeks. So apparently there's no rush. So if I have to come back in three weeks from the day I leave here and start my journey, and I don't, need, I don't know that I need three weeks to go off and come back on this first adventure, that's a long time. <coughs> I can be all over the country and back. <clears throat> um, but I'll be back and uh, we'll kick it some more at Boynton Beach and uh, kick it in the um, uh, the bush crasher. Let's talk about the bush crasher. The, the bush crasher is an answered prayer. The bush crasher is... Uh, let me, let me just, get, I got to take the lid off so I can get a good sip. I got to tell you guys about the, the Bushwhacker, the, the little RV, and how absolutely lucky I am to own this thing. Oh my gosh, I love coffee. When my dear, dear friend Fred in Sarasota, who loves me like a son, <clears throat> said, Tim, you know, maybe you should consider buying a smaller trailer and you don't need to pull your big flagstaff all over the country, you know, with all the setup that it requires every time. I mean, just the weight distribution hitch to take on and off is a 20 minute deal. <laughs> then the slide outs and then leveling it. Now, if I want to camp for one night, it's a lot. If I want to camp for two nights, you know, and then break it all down and do the whole leveling thing, it's a lot. If I want to pull into a rest area and push the slides out and make a sandwich, there's nothing to it. Leave it attached. And I could totally do that. But I'm thinking that if I can stay a little while, a few days, <clears throat> a week that I might find a place I like and get that a, a galley going on the on the bushwhacker and get some cooking videos going on cook out and camp out and get my my room set up put that thing up it's gonna be a pro probably a pretty big deal uh the awning is no big of a deal but that room thing i've got and set that little thing up and then take the e-bike out and run around the area there the campground the state park wherever i'll be and make videos and see things that i can't see in 10 minutes walking, I can see in two minutes riding or, you know, it's going to be awesome. And <laughs> the, the Flagstaff is not a big, big camper. It's not too big to tow. It does cause the, the Tundra to use a lot of gas. I mean, a lot of gas. And I would be driving it you know, 55 to 63 miles an hour, 65 would be speeding. And if I get into some high altitudes and I start traveling and I do get far west, just, um, Fred told me that that 6,000 pound trailer is going to feel a lot heavier going up a 10% grade. And when he first told me, I was like, I didn't want to make him mad or anything. I was like, I'm not getting something else. You know, I have my, I just bought this. I'm going to, this is what I want to travel in. This thing is beautiful. You, you know how much I love it. And I don't know what it was. God is what it was. Uh, I mentioned in a video after that, I started thinking about it. And he was, he was insinuating getting like something like two or $3,000, some little small thing I can lay down in. And, you know, I had decided after camping out in the passenger seat one night, that it's not like the forerunner. If you can't put your legs out, if you can't get horizontal, you can do anything for in a rest area for a few hours to recharge your battery, but you're not going to camp out in the cab of this truck for
for a month or two. And there's no room in a 5.5 foot bed if I put a shell on the back to stretch out. I'm 5'10". The bed's short. This is the Crew Max Tundra. It, it, it takes away from the bed and puts all the room in the cab. I would rather have the big cab than the big bed. But anyway, I started thinking about what Fred said. And uh, I started thinking, you know, I could find something cheap. Uh, you know, I look at these YouTube videos and I've seen people be interviewed that are traveling around and they do have those like enclosed trailers, like a U-Haul trailer, teardrops, small little things. And I've seen them when I go make videos at RV shows and I always kind of scoff at them like, look, it's a coffin. It's a, it's a hard sided tent. It's a bed with walls. And all these times I've been saying and thinking that, look at now, I got one. And I am as proud as I am of, of the uh, Flagstaff. It's two different things. So let me, let me continue. Don't interrupt me. <laughs> so I started thinking about what Fred said. And I mentioned in a video Hey, I might be looking for something small. You know, that might be an idea instead of pulling the flagstaff. People started talking about how you're going to tear it up. You know, every time you tow them, things come apart. Water leaks, screws come out, and this and that. And while mine's a heavy, uh, a well-built unit and everything, it is a trailer. And it can be, you know, weakened in its integrity over thousands of miles, over some of these rough roads that we need to fix in America. I mean, even the interstate. So anyway, I mention it, and a very kind subscriber, through the grace of God, says, you're down in Boynton Beach. Take a look at this. This might work for you. And sent me two links to two teardrops. One you can stand up in, and the coffin. <laughs> The one you can stand up in wanted twelve five. The coffin was eighty five hundred, marked down from ninety five hundred. I thought, well, I don't, I don't care what I decide about a small trailer. But I'm not going to spend twelve thousand five hundred dollars, and I know that they're going to take less. That's their asking price. But I mean, I don't want to insult somebody. I mean, how much can you offer them if they're asking twelve five? So I started looking at the, at the less expensive one and it's something about the picture and everything kind of intrigued me. And I really got, my meter went, get this, go look at this anyway. But then the meter came down because I read some and watched some YouTube videos with a lot of people pointing out a lot of cons in the workmanship because it was a, such a high demanded little uh, boondock ready with a real true gas heater, not an electric heater, a true boondocking uh, trailer that was taking the market by storm. And they, people were signed up, give me one. I'm waiting for one. Give me one, build it, build it. And so they were rushing them out. And while the bottom, the axles, the tires, the, the frame has always been solid as a rock, that is not a problem with them. It was just their uh, cabinetry and some knobs and, you know, the cheap wood or something. The air conditioning is a $150 uh, Frigidaire window unit that lasts you 20 years. They don't break. This one I got's never been turned on. I used it last night. It froze me out of there. I had to turn it on low and back the temperature down. And so anyway... I saw it and I was intrigued with it. And uh, it showed some pictures with the awning out and the enclosed room on it and everything. I thought, still a lot of money. Still a lot of money. I don't want to spend that kind of money. I mean, I just spent a lot of money on the one I got. And I can buy an awful lot of gas for what this would cost, right? I started thinking about everything. So the meter started like coming down of the excitement. But God took it back up. And I'll tell you, you talk about I return things and change my mind. You're absolutely right. You can't believe a damn thing I say. I called the guy. He spent a long time on the phone with me. He's as much of a chatterbox as I am. Nicest guy. 
I've met in a while. Super good guy. Retired uh, paramedic. Uh, built guy. Just one of America's heroes. Him and his wife. Very nice people after I finally met him. But after I talked to him on the phone and got all this information, I, I said, you know, but the price is like, it's unfair to negotiate with you on the phone. I haven't even seen it. I don't like it when people do that with me either. I said, but um, I don't know. I, he says, let me tell you something. This is what he told me. Let me tell you something. If you come here and you look at this and you make a reasonable offer, you're taking it home. So, I mean, what more could a man say that was like, I'm motivated to sell it. So he comes out after I get there, I'm looking at it. Everything was open on it. And he comes out with a cup of coffee. Uh, we hit it off. We're, we're looking at it. Then his wife, Maria, comes out about 20 minutes later after we've pretty much uh, gone over the upstairs and downstairs in it. <laughs> and she, um, she brought me a cup of coffee. Sweet gal. And uh, I said, all right, let's talk business. And then that's when she said, all right, I'm out of here. You guys do that. So I started to talk to him. And like I say, he was, uh, he was very motivated uh, to sell it. And he also expressed to me that he's not a broke dick, as I'm not either. And that him and his wife can, can buy whatever they want if they want to. They could buy a lot of things, but they choose not to because it's not about flashing. And when they bought this... They quickly discovered, his wife anyway, that she did not dig having to crawl over him and get out that little doorway and to use the restroom because it's really just for sleeping. Even though I got a TV in there and I watched some TV last night before I finally closed my eyes and on my new beautiful bed and just love, love, loved it with the air conditioning on. It was fantastic. Uh, it just doesn't work as a couple. This is a single person's trailer, in my opinion. So while the people that had it before him, he understood from the dealer he bought it from, were older and had a bucket list thing and used it and probably discovered the same thing. And then they bought it, intrigued with the teardrop uh, revolution. And they only camp in the winter. They don't do any summer camping. So they've never used that air conditioning. Uh, and they and they go like local, you know, Florida state parks or whatever. His wife loves camping, and he's into fishing. He's got a little skiff boat. They're Floridians. They they are outdoors people, but you know he's a retired paramedic. He's not a broke dick, and he's not, you know, needing. He's also sixty. Uh, what do you say, two or three? No. Yeah, he's 63. And uh, they, they, they were wanting to go to the West Palm Beach RV show and think about getting something small. Even though they can get something bigger, they want small, but something that they can stand in in a bathroom for the wife. I'm talking like what the wolf pup was is what they're looking for. And they're going to get it. And... He doesn't care about what something costs because he can afford it. He cares, don't get me wrong, but I'm saying he could buy a $100,000 camper, he told me, but he's not going to. And there's a lot of things a lot of us can do, right? But we're not going to. We do what we want to do and what we justify doing. So that's my point. I'm just trying to say he didn't buy that. He wasn't the kind of guy that owned that, that that's all he could afford. They tried it. It didn't work for them. And they want it gone. So God works mysterious ways, put people together. And I made a good friend and everything. Um, you know, all the paperwork was in order. I handed him the money. He gave me the title and away I went. And then he also hooked me up with the awning and the, the room thing and uh, a couple of things on the inside, a couple of modifications he's done to it. Even uh, I even went back to his house when I pulled away. He said, oh, if I'd have known him, I'd have gave you one. If you're not too far away, you can come back. 
He gave me a four, a T-bar to break the uh, the lug nuts off the wheel in case I get a, a flat. And because although I have the little socket that fits them that he gave me, that goes into a, a, an impact gun, I don't have an impact gun. So he gave me the T-bar. And uh, so just a really, really fortunate thing. Now I bring it back, coming to the end here. <laughs> And I, and I park it at Teddy's, and everyone is so excited about it. It's such a conversationalist piece. I mean, you pull into a campground with a regular camper, a regular shaped, small, big, medium, everything in between camper trailer, and you're like everybody else. Oh, nice camper. You come in with a teardrop. Hey, what is that? What, what's that about? What, what's it? People are intrigued. It's a great conversation piece. And I'm hoping that's going to bring people into my life that I can create just like it was when I traveled on my Harley Davidson and I was alone and I had everything all packed up on the back seat and I went across country and I set up a little tent and these RVers would come over like, Hey, do you need a cup of coffee? You, you got everything you need? You know, you're all by yourself in this motorcycle. Where are you going? What are you doing? Who are you? <laughs> I love it. I love, love, love it. And so this is going to be great. But anyway, I bring it back to Ted's and everybody there and the, and the guys that showed up yesterday that know Tom, that, are, that came in from out of town, no one made any comments like a few I've read on my comment section. Oh, what a coffin. What a this, what a that. Or, you know, you're nuts. I could never do that. They were all like, you got it going on, man. You are living the life. I'm subscribing to your channel. I hope you have a great time. I'll be watching. This thing is perfect. This thing is great. You know, this thing is like brand new. And that was especially after they saw it yesterday. I painted my fenders. I made the video. And I went and bought all the new bed clothes. And I put that uh, three-inch memory foam that I couldn't wait to get in there last night and sleep on it. Huh. I'm golden, folks. I'm golden. And now, like with inclement weather uh, today, and if I'm traveling and there's inclement weather for a couple of days, I've got that room that I can set up that's waterproof that I don't have to stay sequestered inside where I have to be sitting, you know, and I don't have, or sit in my truck. I have a whole Florida room, a whole outdoor room that I can be in with chairs, table, my grill, read a book, listen to music, everything. I can even bring my TV over to the door and sit and watch TV. I, it's got everything. It's so perfect. And so after two nights of sleeping on it and I, I expressed my disenchantment with the comfort of the cushions, which may have motivated the previous owners to also uh, sell it because they didn't, you know, put a memory foam topper on it or something, or just the fact that two people are trying to get in there, forget it. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. And that's who had it before. The two people that owned it before were couples. What you call a couples camper? This one doesn't fit in that category. So uh, the first two nights were a little uncomfortable sleeping in it, and I was like, oh, then you guys heard me express my slight disenchantment. And uh, you come up with a, a chair, a couple of chairs. Thank you very much, community. Uh, other ideas, an air mattress or this or that. And all these things that you're always trying. You're always listening. You're always trying to be helpful. Please don't stop. I love you guys. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. You can make any mattress comfortable by putting a memory foam on it. You got to get a good one. Not that crate looking thing. Not that styrofoam looking one. A real memory foam. You know? That doesn't have any bumps on one side and smooth on the other. It's smooth on both sides. It's memory foam. And that's what I bought. Full. And it fits in there just a couple of inches all the way around less to be absolutely perfect. Absolutely. So now the painted fenders, the great bed, the air conditioner has never been used. The tires that were changed from those off-road noisy roaring tires to a highway tire 
Oh, I took the little cap off to grease the bearings yesterday. Might have talked, I might have said this already in a video. And I popped the cap off. The little rubber insert that's behind the cap that holds the uh, grease and where the little zerk fitting is that you put the grease gun to, the grease was still axle grease purple. It hadn't even changed colors. It, hadn't, it hasn't turned black as they do. It hasn't rolled. It's new. No one's used it. <laughs> this thing is new. And I know no one's used that air conditioning. <clears throat> um, so I was like, wow, man, this is great. I was The only thing you would want to be concerned about is, you know, a bearing or a flat tire. Well, I got a brand new spare. I've shown you that. You ever been on the ground? And the axle bearings are perfect. And they're Dexter axles, just like the Flagstaff, just like an Airstream. Like I said, that part of it was super high quality. The manufacturing part of the underneath and that 24-gallon bladder that holds 24 gallons of water. That's a lot of darn water for the uh, galley back there to wash a dish or wash my hands that I can carry. 24 gallons, that's a lot of water, especially for one person. I'm not going to be using it for showering or, I mean, I had a sponge bath. You know, I can do whatever I need to do. But that's a lot of water. And 24 gallons only weighs, what, 8.3 pounds per gallon? What's 8 times uh, 24? Uh, 2 times 8 is 160. So, what, a couple of hundred pounds, like another person. Like putting me in the back and towing me around. No big deal. So I'm going to fill her up with water uh, when I leave. Because the thing only weighs uh, 1,300 pounds. It has an 800-pound payload. 200 of it can be water. I've still got 600 pounds of crap I can just put inside of it laying on that bed uh, with totes and clothing and whatever I want, you know, that I can't put in the back of the truck because I'm going to have the e-bike. So I got it all figured out, folks. I'm going to be doing the traveling with the e-bike to see the sights at the campgrounds to meet people. The teardrop's going to be a conversation piece. I'm not even going to know it's back there. I'm going to see America. If it rains and I'm sequestered for a couple of days, I got the Florida room to zip to it. Uh, I got AAA towing. I got the spare. Uh, I got everything I need. And I'm sure along the way, I'm always going to be near a subscriber that's going to reach out to me and say, hey, if you need anything or you want to come by, you know, park it here for a day or two, share a meal together, and let me, let's meet each other. I'm sure I'm going to get those invitations, and I'm going to accept them uh, if I'm nearby, absolutely, as I talked about before. And you guys are going to love it. And I hope that if you quit your prison job and you get to the point where you're debt-free and you're a single person, if you're a couple, you don't want this one, but maybe a little RV and have some fun and do some traveling, see America, see our beautiful country. I promote you do it and meeting people. Uh, the RV world is, is awesome. It's kind of like the boating world. A lot of like-minded people, like going to church, you know, you meet friends, like riding a Harley and you go to places where other motorcycles are, or you see somebody else on a motorcycle. They always wave to each other. Even people with forerunners and Jeep Wranglers there's a cult following, and they wave at each other. It's great to be in a family, or like the YouTube channel I have, with the wonderful community that I have. It's great to be connected and start living like this, because I wouldn't have it any other way. And after all my years and doing everything I've done, which has been a great life, and all my travels, all that experience is now coming into a crescendo of knowing every road in America, and what I want to repeat and do, like the Grand Canyon. Maybe I'm going to be putting the uh, bush crasher right on the south rim there, camped out. And I'll come out and video right outside that little doorway and sit in my chair and video the Grand Canyon for you guys. And you can camp right there on the rim. And, in fact, I'm going to do that. <laughs> One thing I'm going to do, starting very soon, in the next couple of days after I go home, and get up all my supplies from the crasher, get everything organized, get my mind right, make sure I get everything packed right, and what I don't have, I'll, I'll procure, and then I'll begin to continue to crush it.